morning, everybody. Um, my name is Thomas Wagner from the University of Bristol. Um, my co-authors are here, Jude Masusa, Ross Woods. I should add that Nicholas Allen, <coughs> Gemma uh, Coxon, and Jim Free are also part of, part of this work. Uh, both were placed in, at the University of Bristol. So, with respect to improving the hydrology and our ability to model the hydrology, we took two different pathways. One was large-scale modeling, trying to build large-scale models and test them, and another approach was to focus on a particular place and build a very high-resolution model, essentially a, a computational laboratory, if you like, in which we can test processes and what processes are valuable to improve crowd predictions and how we can then simplify these processes in the computational sense so that they could be transferred to national scale models. The aim was therefore to enhance drought processes, understand the hydrologic process that control drought and how we can represent them better in our current models. Uh, the outcomes, a new understanding of hydrologic process control, so what controls, what processes matter most and therefore need to be represented uh, in large scale models. And the evaluation of potential, of potential benefits of more physically based hydrologic modeling approaches, meaning more and more detailed um, approaches to really represent the environment and the question is how much detail is necessary to get the right prediction, production predictions and linking them to the events that was just presented. So the computational uh, laboratory, if you like, that we used is, is this. It's called the um, Penn State Integrated Hydrologic Model. So it's a very high resolution model of at the catchment scale. And it has a few attractive features that allow us to investigate um, in how, how far additional process complexity is valuable or one of um, On the bottom left you see a representation of the channel. So here a particular aspect is that the model allows flow into and out of the channel which is particular in low flow conditions relevant to see how the aquifer connects <coughs> with the channel flow. And at the same time we have vertical fluxes on the right so we can really understand how different fast and slow flow paths from the land surface to the groundwater matter, and I'll give you an example of that. Um, we applied the model to uh, the river, river Kennet, and what you see at the, at the bottom right is the configuration of the model. So instead of having a model that is a, a grid-based model, as, as most large-scale models are, this is based on triangular networks, as they're called, which allows us have a flexible configuration and have areas of very high resolution and areas of very sparse resolution. So you can also test in how far representing something in more spatial detail is helpful or is not helpful. Just to give you one example of what an output of that model would look like. So here on the bottom left you see an image with uh, a range of circles, each circle represents one location where groundwater were measured and the size of the circle represents the variability of the groundwater at that particular location over a certain period of time. The colors represent different geologies and you see that the colors, the sizes of the circles vary with the geology. So if you have a chalk geology you see more variability than in others because of, among other things, different fast and slow recharge pathways from the surface to the groundwater. And what you see on the right is two configurations of the model where we try to have a simple approach to represent that fast and slow flow path to the groundwater. And you can see that without it at the top, this particular, throughout this particular process, you see that the model is not capable of reproducing enough of the variability that you see in reality. Whereas at the bottom, if you add this um, new process, then you can actually represent um, the variability that was observed and the process is <coughs> and simplified in a way that it can be transferred to other models. So essentially this is the, um, the idea of this work package is to take a very complex model and see where can we use this, simplify this model without losing performance. Um, so the, the two just conceptually on the left would be 
what kind of complexity we need for different places in the UK, depending on the complexity of the high logic processes present. And on the right, conceptually, the other idea is to, to um, see can we find computational simplifications that allow us to get the same kind of position in our predictions with much less computational demand, which would not allow us to use this kind of model at the national 